It's hard for us to imagine a world without vaccines for diseases like influenza, smallpox, or polio. In the first half of this century, people panicked when children came down with fever and muscle aches. It might lead to nothing. It might end up with the child spending the rest of his days in a pressurized cylinder everyone called the Iron Lung. In my own lifetime, I was aware of the effect of viruses. Uh, in 1916, for example, which was two years after I was born, there was this severe polio epidemic in the United States, particularly in New York City. And then again, in 1918, 1919, there was a severe influenza epidemic. And in both instances, the effect was quite devastating. Now, I, of course, was too young to understand the significance of that, but I do remember the crippled bodies and the coffins. Nobody knew why polio caused paralysis or death, much less that it could be transmitted in contaminated food, water, or spittle. Home remedies and preventatives were born out of desperation. When polio struck Franklin Roosevelt after he had gone swimming in a chilly lake, people speculated that the cold water must have been the cause. By the late 1940s, a young Jonas Salk was well on his way to becoming a hero to parents worldwide. My whole life has been devoted to being a physician, and this is the way in which I chose to practice medicine. And uh, so this is what the pattern of my life has been, to try to uh, either prevent disease or, or heal or cure in some way. His breakthrough came when Harvard scientists found a way to grow polio virus in quantity. Salk had the raw material he needed to develop a vaccine. My whole approach to this that one could immunize against a virus disease without experiencing infection. Until then, it was believed that you had to experience infection, as in the case of smallpox, rabies, and an attenuated form of the virus. In his lab at the University of Pittsburgh, Salt killed polio virus with formaldehyde to prevent it from causing disease. In 1955, after first trying it on himself, he began inoculating children. The dead virus alerted their immune systems without making them sick. It was treated as the biggest news in medical history. In the United States alone, two generations have grown up without knowing the anguish of the disease. It was all in a day's work, I like to say. And uh, it was appreciated, especially by your parents, for whom Fear was lifted. Back in 1935, a bacteriologist called the battle against disease one of the last genuine adventures in the world. The dragons are all dead, and the lance grows rusty in the chimney corner. About the only sporting proposition that remains is the war against those ferocious little fellow creatures which lurk in the dark corners and stalk us in the bodies of rats, which fly and crawl with the insects and waylay us in our food and drink and even in our love. 